Welcome back to Hannity. He is one of the few people in Hollywood willing to speak out against President Obama. And during the Republican National Convention this summer, movie icon Clint Eastwood made headlines with his harsh critique of the administration. Now, earlier, I had a chance to talk with him about the upcoming election in the state of the country. And just like his speech at the RNC, Eastwood was not mincing words about President Obama. And joining us now, Hollywood star himself, the one and only, I guess, star of the Republican National Committee as well, uh, and that's Clint Eastwood. Clint, welcome to the program. It's great to finally meet you. Good to be with you. Good to be with you, Sean. I appreciate it. Um, you said you wanted to make three points when you went to the Republican National Convention. You said, one, you wanted to point out not everyone is left in Hollywood. You made that point. You talked about, you, you know, Obama had made a lot of broken promises. And then the biggest point, if somebody doesn't do a good job, it's okay to let them go. It's, tell us how you got involved in this. Uh, well, they asked me if I wanted to come back there and, uh, and be involved with the uh, convention. I didn't know exactly uh, how to be in, uh, involved. And they, most of the people are speaking uh, uh, pretty much a, a scripted uh, kind of thing. And I just felt that maybe uh, I just uh, talk a little bit about um, being uh, uh, about things just from just from the heart. I mean, things you, the average citizen wonders about, and uh, wondering why we are at this stage we are with the economy, why we are at this stage we are of the world. You know, I, I tried to warn people about who I thought Barack Obama was. We, we did a lot of work back in 2007 and 2008. You know, kind of came out of nowhere, never did a big deal in his life, voted president a lot as a state senator, no real accomplishment in the U.S. Senate. And so I looked into his background. He's a community organizer. He's with ACORN, hangs out with some pretty radical people, Jeremiah Wright, Bill Ayers, et cetera. So I try to warn people a little bit. You kind of summed up how I feel now four years after him being president. You said he's the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. I think the story is going to be written and to, you'll happen. But I, I just I don't think for some reason people got caught up in 2008. And it seems that many are still caught up today. Your reaction. Well, uh, that's uh, there are people and, and a, a lot of a lot of people who uh, are who feel uh, dissatisfied uh, for, for voting for him last time uh, uh, are afraid to admit that they maybe made a mistake. So it's better to be overly defensive and just say, well, I'm voting for him again. I, I just tried to give people in when I was at the RNC uh, the idea that maybe they could uh, they could they should think about uh, other alternatives uh, and uh, even, you know, not, rather than just voting a party line. And, of course, a lot of people uh, who are on the Republican side who voted for him last time will probably have regrets. Uh, but if, if you have regrets, uh, think about somebody else and somebody who's offered uh, something else, like a business background. Uh, uh, Governor Romney has a great business background. He's extremely well educated. He has several degrees from Harvard, uh, and he's uh, including uh, you know business and including a law degree. He's, a, he's just a, a kind of a perfect guy for uh, the job. And, uh, and, and I think uh, along with Paul Ryan, you've got a great team that's uh, out there ready to go. And I think they can correct a lot of the problems that we've had. Um, the, the, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just uh, I think it's kind of I, I hate to get too simplistic, but I also don't want to complicate it. It's just a certain feeling you have within yourself that it's time to speak up. I have nothing against this fellow that's in. I have nothing against uh, any of the people on the staff. I, I do. Uh, I find myself feeling very resentful about this whole thing in Benghazi. That's been kind of a tragedy that uh, sh should have never happened, or it should have been an attempt. All you can ask when there's a, a crisis like that is to make an attempt. That's the American way. You know, the thing that concerns me the, the most, I've been really blessed in this country, and I, I, just reading a lot about you before the interview, I know you feel the same way about you and your career and your life, and, and I followed your whole career, and I'm a big fan. It really bothers me, you know, my parents grew up in the Depression, to see that right now in America, one in six Americans are in poverty, 25 million Americans unemployed, 49 million Americans on food stamps, and in four years, six trillion in new debt, which we're going to go bankrupt. It's mathematically, it's not going to add up. 
One, I think the thing that really grabbed me when you spoke at the Republican convention is towards the end of your speech. I enjoyed all of it, but this really grabbed me when you said, we own this country. And you went on to say that, you know, politicians, they're employees of ours. And um, you went on to then go that, you know, it's important for you to realize that, hey, if somebody doesn't do the job, you can let them go. So I, for some reason, there seems to be an emotional attachment to President Obama. Why is that such an important thing for you to say? Well, I just think it's important. That's, uh, there is a, the American people deserve, they, de they deserve the best and they, and they, cause they are the best. And uh, I've been lucky in my career to have their support. And I know a lot of other people have too in other uh, uh, lines of work, but uh, you know, they, they deserve uh, a really uh, some straightforward uh, talk. Uh, a lot of it, but a lot of what we're seeing recently is not straightforward. And of course, when you have camp political campaigns, naturally people are insulting one side or the other. But some of it's really kind of gone to extremes. I mean, you're accusing one side of killing people and all that sort of thing. And then, of course, you watch when you watch the debate, you know, like in the second debate, for instance, uh, there was a big uh, the, the president uh, got very uptight and said, I, uh, I'm, I take exception to this. If you're insinuating that anything went wrong. Well, you know, when, when you start overreacting to that's usually a good sign that uh, you're you're overselling the point. If you're really, if you're really satisfied with uh, your position on something, you just say, "Hey, you just very calmly present something." But if you get, if you get in a tizzy over it, then all of a sudden um, you go, "Okay, I, I'm suspicious here." And coming up, more of my exclusive.